Now in this video we shall be discussing a few important concepts regarding your catheterization. So acute retention of urine is a very common surgical problem that we come across in our emergencies and surgical scenarios. So your management for your acute retention of urine be it due to any cause is your catheterization. So in your various examination, they can even ask you uh, questions from the basic steps of your catheterization as an intern or a final year student, you must have been expected to observe or at least do one or two procedures during your internship. So catheterization any is uh, your treatment in case of any case of your acute retention of urine. So the various indications for your catheterization, I have included this table from your Bailey and Love includes drainage, that is your urinary retention, fluid management or monitoring in critically unwell patients, palliative management for your urinary incontinence where other measures are failed or are unsuitable, now following urological surgery to allow healing of the bladder or urethra. Now you have your therapeutic drug delivery like non-muscle invasive blad uh, bladder cancer or for your chronic cystitis such as UTI and interstitial cystitis where your CAG layer replacement therapies and antibiotics are given. Now for your diagnostic purpose as in case of your micturating uh, cystourethrogram, urodynamics and to obtain a catheter specimen of urine for analysis. So these are your various indications of catheterization but do remember that you do it in your acute retention of urine and now we shall look at the steps of your urethral catheterization. So before that, let's take a look at the various types of catheter. So A is your single lumen catheter which is often used for your self catheterization. Then is your B which is your standard urethral catheter with an inflatable balloon retention mechanism. So this is also known as your Follies catheter which you have most oftenly seen in your emergency setup. Then you have your a three way catheter with an extra channel which is used for your irrigation and fourth is your caudate teeth catheter. So please remember these images though they are very simple and basic but trust me they have been asked in your exams and have the potential to be repeated again. Now the various steps of your urethral catheterization. So first it has to be done in an aseptic technique. So you need to have a proper hand washing, sterile gloves and a sterile catheter plug. Then two clean, then the step two is to clean the urethral meatus with antiseptic solution. Then to instill the lidnokin gel into urethra and hold it for two to three minutes. In men, the penis should be held perpendicular and taut, whereas in women, the labia should be held apart to provide adequate exposure of your urethral meatus. Now the catheter should be inserted as far as the hilt of the catheter and should pass freely. The type of catheter is also dependent on the indication. Now if there is any resistance to catheterization, it should be stopped and assistance sought. So the patient may require a coedative catheter if the obstruction is thought to be a large prostate or a cystoscopy to negotiate a false passage or stricture. Now following this, the position of the bladder is confirmed with the drainage of clear urine and the balloon should be inflated with 10 ml of sterile water. Now the catheter bag is then attached and then you note the details regarding the type and size of catheter and the residual volume should be clearly recorded. So you guys need to remember the steps in the sequential manner as they might just distort the steps and ask you to arrange this step. So hence this urethral catheterization steps have been discussed and next we have your suprapubic catheterization. So it is done with the help of an open technique and a percutaneous Seldinger technique. Now open technique is usually done when you have a bladder palpable. So you have an infiltration of your local anesthesia to the skin and the fascia of your suprapubic region, two finger beneath uh, two finger breads above your pubic symphysis in the midline and then you insert your catheter. This is usually done for your palpable bladder. Now the Seldinger technique of insertion is the safest for your percutaneous insertion. So what happens over here is a long needle is inserted in the perpendicular direction into the bladder and aspiration of your clear urine confirms the entry. Then a guide wire is placed through the needle and the needle removed. A small skin incision is made at the site of your guide wire and allows the trocker to pass over the guide wire into the bladder thereby dilating the tract. Now through this trocker, 
you have a 16 French catheter which is placed and your balloon inflated. The trocker is removed and the catheter bag attached. Now, if the bladder cannot be uh, confidently identified or in those with extensive abdominal or pelvic surgery, uh, open cystotomy should be performed to safely enter the bladder and ensure that there is no bowel in the part of catheter. So, this is your Seldinger technique of your suprapubic cystotomy. So, if you look at this uh, diagram, this is a suprapubic Seldinger catheter kit which is readily available and makes life easy to do your suprapubic cystotomy. So, guys, please remember your important steps of catheterization, the various types of catheter and the indications of catheterization. Uh, catheterization though they are basic and simple topics but then they are frequently asked in your exams thank you